Now in the next part, part B, we're asked to show that the quadrilateral OACB is a rectangle. And what I'll do is just draw a little sketch to guide us through this proof, okay? Let's just imagine that we have the origin O and then A, and let's say C's over here, and maybe B's down over here. Who knows, okay? So we're looking at this quadrilateral through here. Now at the moment this quadrilateral obviously doesn't look like a rectangle. The first thing that I need to do is to show that if it stands any chance of being a rectangle, I would obviously expect the vector OA okay, and the vector OB to be at 90 degrees here. All right? Now, in order to do that, I'm going to rely on the fact that we should know that this vector, which is a up here and this vector B, if they're at 90 degrees then you should know that the scalar product A dot B would equal zero if they're at 90. And that's what we're going to start with. Okay, We're going to look at A dot B and if we do A dot B, remember what you do is you multiply the components of the I's together so that would be 2 times 1 so we'll just put that down there as 2 times 1 you add it to the product of the J component so that's 2 times the 1 here so 2 times 1 and you add that to the product of the K component so that's 1 here and minus 4 so that's 1 multiplied by minus 4 and if you work that out we have 2 plus 2 which is 4 and then this is minus 4 so voila it comes to 0 so that tells us then that therefore OA okay, and OB are perpendicular ok so just pop that in there so, we've got that statement so far. So, I'm going to modify this diagram now. Okay, we're just going to take out that side. Okay, we'll move that to there. So, I now know that my side O to B is now perpendicular with OA. So, we'll just finish marking that in. Okay, and that was the vector B. I'll take this out now, OK? So we've got that. Next, if this stands any chance of being a rectangle, then clearly I want to show that AC is the same length as O to B and going in the same direction, straight across here. So in other words, all I've got to do is show that the vector A to C is exactly the same as the vector O to B. And so that's the next stage of the proof. So we're going to look at the vector A to C. Now, A to C, okay, if I want to go from there to there, let's just put an arrow on there, okay? A to C is the same as going from A to O, all right, and then following that with O to C. We'll just write that in for you. The A to C then is A to O followed by O to C. And A to O is the same as going in the negative sense of O to A. So that's minus O to A plus the O to C. We can change this round, if you like, as O to C minus O to A. Now this is a standard result. Some of you most probably won't need to go through this process here. Going from one point to another via the origin is O to the last letter minus O to the first letter. So you should really know that A to C would have been this result anyway. But these few stages there, just in case you uh, weren't aware of that. OK, working this out now, O to C is 3, 3, minus 3 as a column vector, 3, 3 minus 3, just write that in, minus O to A, O to A 2, 2, 1, so 2, 2, 1, 
put that in as a column vector and if we subtract the components we get 3 take away 2 which is 1 3 take away another 2, 1 and minus 3 minus another 1, minus 4 alright, so that's the vector A to C and when you compare A to C with the vector B what do you notice? 1, 1, minus 4 1, 1, minus 4 exactly the same vector so that means it's going in the same direction and has the same length so this is equal to O to B so therefore if I just wind this up okay, I therefore have that A to AC is parallel okay, to OB let's draw that in okay we'll just we'll just rub that out okay and we've now got C over here okay so AC is parallel to OB and we've got that the lengths are exactly the same and we have that AC equals OB that's the length so therefore that should be sufficient to say that OACB is a rectangle okay so quite a long solution here for that part but uh, hopefully I've explained it in some detail so that you can follow it and now we're asked to find the exact area of the rectangle so what I need to do is just find the length of OA and OB and multiply those two together so the length of OB we'll put that in there, modulus, OB all you need to do is do the sum of the squares of the components and square root so that's going to be the square root then of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus and you don't need the minus 4 by the way so just put that in as 4 squared the minus is just saying the direction but it doesn't affect the length if you work this out what you get is the square root of 18 okay and the square root of 18 is 9 times the square root of 9 times 2 which is 3 root 2 alright so we got that for the length of OB and if we look at the length of OA okay we just sum the squares of those components and square root the final result so that would be 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared and if you do that that comes out at the square root of 9 which is exactly 3 so therefore the area of OACB must obviously be the uh, product of these two lengths so that is 3 root 2 multiplied by another 3 here so we end up with 3 times 3 which is 9 and get 9 root 2 so the answer the exact area remember is what they asked is 9 root 2 and you could put if you like square units on the end because it's an area okay and that brings us to the end of quite a long part part B